Bruce, have you sold your VC? I haven't seen the review. What's going on? <laughs> I've gotten a few questions from some of you. And so I want to talk about this Grail watch that I purchased a couple months ago. It's been a couple months now. I went down to Las Vegas, uh, drove down with the family, stayed in Las Vegas for a few days for the weekend. I had one of my friends fly down and meet me down there and he helped me film the experience. So shout out to Chris if you're watching this video. Shout out to Karan who sold me the watch if you're watching this presentation. But I purchased my Grail watch about two months ago which is the VC Overseas 4500V in blue, stainless steel. It's a very difficult watch to get at retail these days. And you know what? I'm heavy into the honeymoon, heavy into the honeymoon. And I want to get out of the honeymoon to a degree before I do an in-depth review and talk about the details and all of that stuff. I want to be a little bit more impartial because right now <laughs> I'm happy as a fat kid in a candy store with this watch. So today I want to answer a few common questions that I've been getting about this um, without really going into too much detail. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. So the first question is, excuse me, what is the best thing about the overseas? And I struggle to answer that because there's so many great things about it. But if I had to pick one element, it would be the dial. The dial is so dynamic. I look at it and really it, it depends on the light situation that you're in. Sometimes it kind of looks black. In other lights, you get a hint of purple in the dial. And then in direct sunlight, you get this, oh, this vibrant blue color. You see the sun ray. And if you look at the index track, it almost has an electric appearance. It, it's so... It's so beautiful, guys. It, it's so pretty. If I had to say what is the best blue dialed watch in the world, this would have to be top three, in my opinion. It's done so well. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me if the way that VC produces this dial is the exact same way the Chronomet Blue dial is produced. It really has such a great lacquered look, but you get the sun ray, you get the reflections, you get that variance in saturation and color, and it's just the perfect backdrop for these applied white gold markers and, and handset. And I love the simplicity. I love the fact that I don't see overseas printed on the dial. I don't see a water resistance designation. I don't see really anything other than the branding and Swiss made. And it's, it's so simple. It's so clean. It's so dynamic. And it's just, oh my goodness, it looks so good. So I'd have to say the, the dial is probably the best part, but the finishing is superb. It's all hand finished. I haven't found a flaw anywhere in the watch yet when it comes to the build quality, the details of the movement. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a Geneva Hallmark movement. You see the seal here in this macro shot of the movement. And uh, so I'm loving every bit about the watch. It's hard to single out one element that I love. But um, another thing that I've thought of is whenever I look at this watch, I'm reminded of, I guess you could say the sacrifice it took, the hard work, the patience that it took to save for this watch. I mean, it, it it's taken me years to get to this level to responsibly be able to put down $20,000 on a silly luxury item like a wristwatch. It really is ridiculous when I vocalize that. Um, but I mean, it's been a long time coming. It's it's been a lot of a lot of saving, and I've sacrificed watches that I've loved. I, I let go of some really amazing pieces in route to this because I wanted to simplify. I <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I wanted to make this purchase responsible, if that makes sense. So so when I look at my my wrist, I'm reminded of the work that it took to get here, and so that makes it. I don't know, that makes it a little bit more special than if this was just a spur of the moment, whimsical purchase. Those are certainly fun. I've, I've made many of those purchases. So I'm not trying to knock those, but I think there's just something different when this is such a goal, a, a long-term purchase. And uh, so that, that's an element that I also enjoy as well. Now, what are the worst things about this watch? That's the next question. Bruce, are you bothered by the fact that this movement does not hack? No, I'm not. And <clears throat> I might sound like I'm totally justifying this. I might sound like a tool, but I'm not BSing you guys. It's, it doesn't bother me. In fact, half of my watches in my small collection, they don't hack. 
half of them do hack. So you might be thinking, wow, you spent $20,000 on a watch. It doesn't hack. My watch that cost me $200 hacks. Bruce, what is the deal? Uh, well, you know, a lot of high-end or, or Hout brands, high horology pieces, they don't hack. And it's not necessarily about seeing, you know, the time down to the second. It's about knowing that your movement is working. And there's an elegance to that. So when I look at this, I, I just know the time and, and it's not down to the second. I'm not obsessing whether this watch is running plus 1.5 seconds per day or plus two seconds per day, right? It's taking a level of uh, complexity out and kind of helping my OCD to a degree. So no, I'm not bothered by the fact that this doesn't hack in the slightest. And really that's, that's no BS guys. The thing that does slightly bother me, it's the only real niggle I have with this watch is the fact that I think there's no anti-reflective treatment. I can't remember. There might be one layer on the underside, but it certainly doesn't do a great job at minimizing haze and reflections. And I would love to see this beautiful blue dial, the white gold applied markers. I'd love to see this fine execution to a higher degree of clarity with an excellent layer or multiple layers of anti-reflective treatment on the underside of the sapphire crystal. Um, but really that is my only real complaint. I, again, I'm happy as a fat kid in a candy store with this piece and I've got very little uh, complaints here. And most of my experience with this watch has been nothing short of amazing. In fact, I have no regrets in, in purchasing this piece uh, in the slightest. It's It's been everything that I'd hoped for and maybe a little bit more if I'm honest. So um, let's go to the next question here. Are you ever worried, Bruce, about wearing such an expensive watch on your wrist? I, I get that question maybe the most out of all of it. And I've been there. I've, I've been at that place many times in the past. There was once where I thought, I could never own a $3,000 Omega because I'd be afraid of wearing it. I'd be afraid of scratching it. I'd be afraid of, of uh, marring or marking it or devaluing it or God forbid having it stolen or something like that. And that's a very real concern for a lot of us. And I think the longer I've been in the hobby, the more I've been desensitized to price to a degree. So, I mean, now I wear... Most days I'm wearing a watch that's at least $4,000. Sometimes, you know, it's the, the Speedmaster. Sometimes it's an Oris Aquis that is far less than 4000 Sometimes it's my Hulk. And a lot of the times it's this uh, watch. And I'm never in an area of town where I feel uncomfortable. I'm never in a situation where I'm concerned about my own safety. And I'm fairly careful with this watch. I know scratches you know, little hairline wear marks here and there. Those will come with time. And uh, I think I, I might have put a couple in the bracelet at this point, but, you know, that's just part of owning and loving watches. So I'm not necessarily concerned with the wear and tear. And I'm usually in really, really safe areas and everything. I don't travel with this watch or I haven't yet, you know, with, with COVID and everything. So no, I'm not concerned about uh, wearing this watch. And I think You'll probably get there too at some point if you're feeling this apprehension um, because I think the longer you're in the hobby and the more you're looking at higher and higher priced watches, the more it becomes a non-issue because honestly, most people, they don't notice your watch. They will not know if you're wearing an Invicta, <laughs> a Casio, a Rolex, a Grand Seiko. I get the most compliments or comments when I'm wearing like a micro brand that's just loud and proud, maybe a bronze watch or a meteorite dial or something that has a lot of pop and shine to it. And in those instances, I either got those watches on loan or for free, or I paid very little for them. So most of the time people don't notice what you're wearing. And uh, the, that's my answer to the question. Let's go to, uh, to three more as we wrap up the video. How are the straps, Bruce? How are the straps? Well, they're great. I wear it on the bracelet probably 95% of the time. I'm a bracelet guy. And I think this bracelet is fantastic. I mean, with the finishing, with the half Maltese cross design that's in each one of these links, it just flows so well. The light play is great. I think it's most balanced on the bracelet. So that's what I wear it the most on. 
What I certainly like to put it on the rubber from time to time, if I'm gonna be sitting at a desk for a while and I don't wanna take the watch off, if I wanna save a little bit of wear and tear on the bracelet, I'll put it on the rubber and then I'll put it on the leather very rarely. I think only twice I've worn it on the leather because I'm such a casual guy, as you guys know, I dress like a bum 99% of the time, super casual. And so when I wear a shirt and tie, it's maybe an hour a week when I go to church and occasionally I'll put it on uh, the leather as opposed to the bracelet. But I love the quick strap change system that VC is employing here with this design. It's, it's executed very well. And I do like playing with the straps from time to time. Now there's two last, two last questions. Would I ever sell this watch? Um, Maybe, <laughs> I don't know. This is where I differ from a lot of you that watch me, a lot of watch collectors. We have what we call keepers where we will never sell it. It's sentimental, but I don't have keepers. I I've fooled myself into thinking that I do have keepers, but I just don't. Uh, and maybe it's because I see so many watches as I review uh, viewers' watches, watches that brands lend in, or authorized dealers that uh, lend in watches. So I see so many, maybe I'm a little desensitized, but I don't have keepers. I don't have sentimental watches. I have absolutely zero plans in selling this watch. I recognize it's a very hard watch to get and it will only continue to, to be more difficult to get as time goes on with this becoming a boutique exclusive color and uh, just the limited quantities that VC produces of the stainless steel overseas. I recognize I've <laughs> really got a great watch. And so, no, I'm not looking to sell it. I don't plan on selling it, but I will never say never if it helps me get to, I don't know, some amazing data graph or something in the future. Maybe it gets sacrificed, just like some amazing watches got sacrificed on route to get this piece for me earlier on in 2020. So I'll never say never, but uh, don't expect to see this for sale anytime soon. Now, the last question, Bruce, do you have a new grail? Um, no, I, I don't right now. I mean, there's certainly watches that I would like to try, but having gotten this one, uh, <laughs> I'll use the analogy again. I'm a fat kid in a candy store, man. I, I'm so happy. I'm so content right? Uh, I'm, I'm not really lusting after any other watches. And I'm sure that will change with time. There are watches I'd love to try, like the Royal Oak from Audi Mar Piguet, the 15400 or 15500 in silver and stainless steel. I'd love to try that watch out at some point, but um, yeah, I don't know if it will ever happen. We will see. But no, I don't have really any grail plans at the moment. I'm just going to continue to enjoy this watch to enjoy this hobby. And I hope you guys do the same, enjoy watches and uh, really just have a great time as you collect and experience new pieces. And uh, really that's what we're all about here, uh, sharing this hobby. We want to have a great time enjoying horology. So that's where I'm at. Thanks for watching today, guys. I really appreciate it. Let me know if you have any questions. I will be doing more content here on the uh, Vacheron Constantin overseas. So stay tuned for that. It just, it might be a little while. I have to get out of the honeymoon to a higher degree than I am right now. So uh, that's it today. Hope you guys have a great day. Actually, wait, a couple housekeeping things. Um, I've got the Helsin Hammerhead 40 here that I'm gonna be giving away within my Discord server. I think we'll do that this weekend so you guys can have this on wrist before Christmas, or if you want to flip it, <laughs> you can flip it, the winner, and uh, help that with your next uh, Christmas present, whatever it is. So we're going to be doing that real soon. And I've got some upcoming video right now on the desk behind me. We have the Oris Caliber 400, the in-house Aquas. It's been sitting here for three and a half days. It's at 7 p.m. tonight. It will be four days and I'm testing the 120 hours of power reserve. I've been doing um, a 30 day test drive, so to speak, of this watch, testing the accuracy and, and everything. So that video will be coming likely within two weeks, but stay tuned for that if you're interested. It's going really well and I have a lot of comments to make about, uh, about the new watch release from Oris. So those are the two housekeeping things. Thanks for sticking around. Hope you guys have a great night. And uh, see you in the next one.